Hello you guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I hope you are doing well. I am so excited for this video today because if you're like me, you start a series and you let it sit on your bookshelf for a very long time. There are so many series that I am in the middle of just because I get so excited to start one and begin reading and opening up myself to that world. I literally am in the middle of a million series to the point where it's a problem. Like I need to start reading. I used to be someone who would start a series and literally have to finish it, like read them consecutively back to back. Somewhere along the way I stopped doing that and I would just start a series and forget about it and pick up a new series and start that and then forget about it. So with that being said, I'm in the middle of one too many series and I need to start getting them done and get through them and so I can come to the conclusions. I thought it would be a fun idea to do the finishing series I'm in the middle of reading vlog because I need something to get me through some of these series. With that being said, I think the first book that I'm going to go into is the second book in the Gold Rush Ranch series. If you don't know what that is, that is Elsie Silver's first series. So I'm going to go into a photo finish because I already read the first one. I think I gave that one a three and a half stars, but this is actually about Violet, which is the sister of all the brothers in Chestnut Springs. So I'm so freaking excited to start this book. I don't know what else I'm going to start. I have a feeling in this one I'm going to want to read A Court of Mist and Fury, which is the second book in the Akator series, and it's like everyone's Roman Empire, and I just haven't gotten around to it because, don't hate me, but I didn't like the first Akator book. It's not that I didn't like it, I was just very bored. However, I know it was a lot of like world building, so yeah, I think I'm going to start a photo finish, and I'm going to take you guys along on these books and see how I feel about them and everything, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and Let's start a photo finish by Miss Elsie Silver. She will never steer me wrong. You guys, I am 150 pages exactly into a photo finish. I don't know if I said this yet, but this is Elsie Silver's first series. So she has the Gold Rush Ranch series, which is this one. She has the Chestnut Springs series, which is her second one. And then her most recent series is the Rose Hill series, which is ongoing. The first one was okay. It wasn't anything that I completely fell in love with, but again, Elsie Silver's writing and her characters are just something that I will always gravitate to. However, this one, this follows Violet, which is the sister of all the brothers in the Chestnut Spring series. So we're finally getting her backstory. I remember her a little bit from those books, but I just never knew her story and I'm finally getting it. Cole in this is literally a combination of Cade and Beau from the Chestnut Spring series. And I love him so much. I'm already thoroughly enjoying this one way more than I did the first one. The first one followed Vaughn and Billy and it was kind of like about her coming to work at the ranch and training a horse and it was good it just wasn't my favorite i don't think i liked him as much but i'm really liking him he just has so much depth to him and a violet is just so shy but she understands him because you can basically read this from the back but cole is a veteran and he's struggling with some ptsd and violet understands him because her brother Bo has PTSD because he's also a veteran so her understanding of him is just making the book very very special it's a literal perfect grumpy sunshine as well and I'm really enjoying this so far I am going to the gym and I'm bringing my kindle along with me so I'm going to see how much I can read at the gym I am again like I said chapter 13 150 pages in I'm really enjoying it
cardigan. I lit a candle because I think it's going to start raining. Yeah, it's sprinkling a little bit. Um, I'm going to try and finish a photo finish. I still stick to the fact that I like it better than the first one because, again, the guy in this is like a mix of Cade and Bo. But I feel like I kind of hit like a plateau. Is that the right word? I don't know. It was like on a high and then like now we're just kind of like up there and just like not much is happening. Um, I did get more reading done at the gym today. I am 73% in. So I'm going to try to finish it. It does say 73% in on my Kindle, but I feel like I'm like way closer to being done if you look at it from, uh, no, I guess, I don't know, but I'm going to try to sit here and read this. I'm also going to take the annotations that I did on my Kindle and move them to the actual book. So I'm going to do that and then I am going to continue to read. <laughs> photo finish last night and there are definitely a lot of tabs in there the final rating that i landed on was a 3.75 because in the grand scheme of things i definitely enjoyed it better than off to the races i definitely enjoyed it a little bit more than off to the races however i feel like in the middle towards like the end it was like painful to get through it is so weird for me to say that about an elsie silver book However, I can 100% say that this first series definitely is not as good as the Chestnut Springs or the Rose Hill series. I really enjoyed the aspect of Cole and him trying to figure out how to love himself so he could also love Violet and basically him telling her her secrets and him telling him, him telling her his secrets and opening up to her. I really enjoyed that aspect. Violet honestly annoyed me sometimes because he is going through PTSD and a very hard time and I just feel like yes she was understanding at times but also at other times I feel like she was just like a little bit selfish maybe it's like I feel like that but I also feel like it was kind of what's the word I'm looking for it was kind of okay because she was looking out for herself I don't know if any of that makes sense because I don't want to give any spoilers away but again the writing is very good I was just like it was painful to get through because I felt like we were repeating and repeating and repeating things um but yeah, 3.75, I definitely do think that Chestnut Springs is still at the very top for me. Rose Hill, there's only one book out, and these ones um, are getting traditionally published, so I don't know when the third one comes out. I'm definitely going to finish this series just because I do love an Elsie Silver book. I don't think I will ever rate an Elsie Silver book below a three star. I also kind of like getting the little hints of Vaughn and Billy from the first book in this book. It was really nice. The story was there. It was just a little bit dragged on character-wise. I really liked Cole and the character development that he had in this book. Violet, again, her kind of coming into herself was also a very, very good thing. It's just when those two things were happening together, it's like they both were being selfish for those things. And it was definitely understood. But at the end, they ended up together. So it was just kind of like confusing in a way because it's like I feel like in real life, it just wouldn't have worked out. These are just like one of those like book couples where I'm like, would you still be together today? <laughs> but yeah, so... With that being said, I am going to show you the next book. It has finally come time for me to suck it up and continue on with the Agatha series. So I'm going to read A Court of Mist and Fury. I know this is people's like favorite book ever, like the Roman Empire book. Everyone says push through from the first one and you'll be sucked in. I read around Christmas, I read the first one and it is now August. So I'm going to actually go ahead and read a summary of the first book because I kind of, it's not that I forget, I just like want to refresh myself before I jump into this one. 
I remember having to listen to the audiobook of that one because I was very bored and I understand that like it's a bunch of world building in the first one and you have to get through it to get to the story. It was literally like pulling teeth for me trying to get through it. I think it's finally time for me to continue to pursue the series because every time I see someone talk about it I literally have to like swipe or like skip through because I don't want to ruin any part of the series for me. So I'm going to start A Court of Mist and Fury and it will be spoiler free. I'm going to the Steelers game tonight. I don't know if you know this, but I'm from Pittsburgh. So I'm going to the Steeler preseason game. So I'm going to sit here before I have to get ready and start this, but I'm going to read the little summary of the first book first so I can get up to date. <laughs> This is my first update for A Court of Mist and Fury. I am 25% of the way through and I can already say I like this one better than the first one. Please ignore my bangs. I do not know what's going on with them today. I think my issue with the first one was just like it was a bunch of world building so I was just like learning the characters and learning the world and the magic system. This one is already way more action packed and you already know how the world works and the map and everything so I feel like there's just more going on in this one and I feel like there's not a doll moment in the first one there were definitely doll moments and just kind of like filler moments while you got to like the main point and this one is completely different I honestly feel like this one's a completely different vibe than the first book I do want to say that I just met names that I think I've heard before that are important to the story um Cassian and Israel Azriel I'm not sure how to that's the thing about me I have been like on my phone like looking up name pronunciations because there are so many different names and I also just got to um Valeris for the first time which is I know a big city in the Agritar world because I always see um Valeris sweatshirts but I would like to say that I love Resand. Resand? Reese? I don't know how people pronounce it I think I say in my head what do I say? Resand. 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 Yeah definitely um I really do like his vibe. I love him and I know he's like everyone's favorite like bad guy. Like everyone's obsessed with him. Right now she's obviously still with Tamlin if you read these books. Um, it's really not a spoiler. You can literally read them on the back of the first book. But yeah, I am loving Reason. I am actually thoroughly enjoying this book. Um, there's still honestly not a bunch going on, but it's still more action packed than the first. I just really don't think I liked the first one. I was honestly bored in the first one, but I'm happy I'm continuing it now. But that is my update. Again, 25% of the way through. I probably will update again at 50% just so the book is huge. Like the book is so thick. So I feel like I need to like take it in chunks and then like tell you guys my opinion and my thoughts on it. But yeah, Feyre, I do enjoy her and I like how like headstrong she is, but sometimes I can just like, I just want to shake her and be like, girl like wake up like that like what are you doing you know what I mean if you read this book I feel like you'll know but yeah that is my update and I am kind of understanding the hype around it now I didn't get into any like crazy exciting part yet but I'm gonna continue reading and hopefully I will okay 42% through and I just want to say I took my Kindle to the gym and I was reading and I looked up four miles I walked four miles reading this didn't even realize it. I was on the treadmill for over an hour. You're lucky if I get 40 minutes on the treadmill done. Anyway, one thing I am going to say, I know from seeing different things and people talking about this book, we do end up hating Tamlin, but I don't know why, because she's not on speaking terms with him right now, and I'm on chapter 26, but whatever, what he did, like, keeping her safe and like locked up obviously that's not good like him not letting her basically live her life and leave like I feel like I've read much worse things in books so I'm wondering if maybe that isn't the thing that everyone hates him for because if it is that's kind of underwhelming but I don't know I'm gonna keep reading but I feel like this is like a completely different book than the first one like I really am enjoying it it is taking me a while I mean it's, I started it two days ago and I'm like that much through it I have that much left so I guess actually not that bad it is a heavy book like it's not a fluffy romance where you're gonna be able to like finish it in a day or two it is very heavy in terms of wording and the whole 
world building and fantasy aspect of it so it's not like it's like a super easy book to digest so i am like taking my time reading it and trying to thoroughly enjoy it but again if tamlin just like not letting her go out and hunt and I don't want to say live her life because she's able to live her life just on the grounds where she's safe after everything that happened. I just feel like obviously that's bad. Okay, I'm not saying it's not I'm not saying it's good. But like there has to be something else. Like that's very underwhelming. I have a feeling like there's something else. Everyone watching this is like laughing at me, like just you wait. But just cuts in and and there's only one room I would just like to say that I was wrong and I definitely get why we hate Tamlin I just don't think I realized that he literally like was starving her I think that's the issue I feel like we didn't like find that out until later in the book or I just didn't put two and two together but like he like literally locked her away and wasn't feeding her. So I understand why we hate Tamlin and I also understand why we hate Tamlin from the end of the book. But with all that being said, I finished A Court of Mist and Fury yesterday and I just like needed a second to sit on it. By the way, this is Scout. He loves to lay with me when I'm reading. Say hi, Scout. He's my best friend. I love him so much. He's named after Scout from To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, let's get down to it. My rating. I would like to say that I rated A Court of Mist and Fury 4.25 stars, which is an amazing rating. Also, ignore my hair. It's wet. I just got out of the shower. It's not greasy. It's just wet. <laughs> I think that, honestly, if I would have read the books consecutively back to back, I feel like I would have rated it even higher I just had to like look up summaries and like a lot of the characters I forgot about and there were so many characters and this world is so complex and so big that I feel like not reading it back to back or even like close closer together like again I read this in December and it is now August so you know I just I feel like I would have connected with it a lot more and don't get me wrong I do connect with the characters I really do enjoy Reese and, and Feyre like I love them it's just the world was is so complex and so big that I forgot a lot of things and I had to like go back and you know look up things and read up summaries and synopsises and stuff like that however I've seen on different social media that the last like a hundred pages plus of a Sarah J Mass book is going to literally be giving you heart palpitations like no matter what they're right the whole like this much left of the book don't get me wrong obviously all this was was really good too but the last hundred some pages my jaw was on the floor i couldn't put it down i was outside on the deck and i was like oh my god like i can't do anything i have to sit here and finish this book like it was like hit after hit after hit after hit of different information coming at you and it was insane i definitely get why people love this world so much because it is such an escape like it's so complex that it's such an escape that you don't even realize you're reading in a way like you if you picture it in your mind like it feels like you're there her writing is very very special so i definitely understand the whole sarah j mass world if you saw one of the clips like a few nights ago again with the pronunciation with some of these characters in towns and cities i don't know if i'm pronouncing them right but let's talk about am anyway a few nights ago i put up the town of Valeris, Valaris, one of those on my tv screen i lit a candle and i was just reading on my kindle and it was amazing it was cozy it was amazing an amazing book i definitely think i'm gonna read the third one like a lot closer <laughs> together than i read the first and the second book because i want to keep the information in my head and in my brain and the way it left off i feel like i need to read the next one immediately with that being said the last book that i am going to read 
with continuing my series is going to be Two Twisted Crowns by Rachel Gillig. I read the first one, which is One Dark Window, and I think I only rated it a three, three and a half around there. I just felt like it was boring at times, and I've said this before, like people were really, really obsessed over this, these two books, and I just, for me, I was kind of bored. I feel like I wasn't, I'm just like not a dark academia girly. But it's like getting like fall out cooler. We're gonna start getting to these fall Halloween months. So I figured why not just finish out the duology? It's only duology. But what I am going to do, there are also so many different characters and ma the magic system of this is so complex. So the magic system is actually like a tarot card. So how that works is if you have one, you possess that magic, but there is a consequence to each card. And that's like the only magic that's al that is allowed is through these tarot cards. You can't have any other magic. So that's why people get sick and die and stuff if they get touched by the mist in this world, which gives them magic. You can only have the tarot cards because you can turn it on and off. I hope that makes sense. I think that's right. Again, I read the One Dark Window months ago. That's the thing with these series is I will read them and I'll be so into it. And then I'll be like, okay, I need to pick up a different book right now. I don't consecutively read them. And so I forget stuff, especially with the fantasy series, just because the worlds are so complex and you're building a whole different world and magic system that it's easy for it to just slip through my brain. However, I'm hoping I like Two Twisted Crowns more because a lot of people do like Two Twisted Crowns more. And there's also an added POV in this. So you're getting three different POVs, I believe, in this book. But yeah, I'm going to read... Two Twisted Crowns. I'm so actually happy that I'm getting so many different series done. I'm finishing this series of the duology of the Shepherd King duology. And yeah, so let's start reading. I'm like a little over halfway with One Dark Window. I feel like it's a completely different book than the first one. I can 100% say that I would like this one way better than the first one. In the first book, we only get Elspeth's point of view. In the second book, you get two more point of views. You get Ravens and Elms. Elms' point of view is like the best thing I have ever read. Like, it is so good. He's like sparking a relationship with Ioni. Ioni, I don't really know how to pronounce her name. Their relationship has me kicking and giggling my feet. Giggling and kicking my feet. Like, it is so good. It is, like, like perfect. Their banter is, like, top level. It literally feels like a completely different book. Like, adding those two point of views, like, I feel like it's completely different. I like this one so much better. But it's, like, 68 degrees right now. It feels like fall, so I'm going to go on the deck and hopefully finish it. I have about 120 pages left, I'd say. Oh my god, like, it's like a completely different book. That's all, like, I'm in, like, shock at how different it is and how much I'm enjoying this because I remember not wanting to pick up the first one, like, at all. I enjoyed the magic system, but I was just bored reading the first one. This one is so good, and I feel like there's more, like, stuff going on and it's more high stakes than the first one. So good. Okay, you guys, I have finally finished Two Twisted Crowns. The rating that I landed on is a 3.5. So the first one I rated a 3 and then this one I rated a 3.5 because I did like it a little bit better. But the only reason I liked it a little bit better was because of Elm's point of view that was added. I think that that made the story so much better. The romance in his point of view was amazing. I just feel like this duology wasn't for me personally. I was really excited whenever I started this one because I really enjoyed it in the beginning and in the middle but then I just feel like I started to lose the plot and I was just a little bit bored. I don't know I like was reading it and I was like I just can't wait for this chapter to be over so I can be closer to getting done with it in the back of my brain I was thinking that and I know like I didn't absolutely love a book whenever I'm thinking about that. If I love a book I don't want to put it down. This one I wanted it to be done and put down. I just think maybe the Dark Academia books aren't for me, and that's okay. Not everything is going to be for you. I also think that I have to be in a mood to read the book that I want to read. Filming this video, the goal was to just continue series that I am in the middle of. So even if I didn't feel like picking up a book, I still did it because 
that was the point of the book, finishing series I'm in the middle of. So the first one, A Photo Finished by Elsie Silver. I was in the mood for romance, so that was good. And then the second one was A Court of Mist and Fury, which I don't know if I was ready to read that one, but I'm very happy I did because I did thoroughly enjoy it. And then whenever I got to this one, I just knew that I didn't want to pick it up. I don't know if I ever wanted to pick it up just because I know how I felt about the first one, but I already had it bought. So I was like, might as well finish it so I can put it up on my bookshelf. But yeah, you guys, that was me finally finishing some series that I'm in the middle of. I plan on 100% continuing the Elsie Silver one. I plan on continuing Akatar. If you like this, please let me know. I will do another one of these, maybe even continuing the Akatar series. I'm very excited for fall because of all the fantasy reads. I think one of the ideas I have for fall video, I am going to say, is to reread or read the Twilight series because that was very big whenever I was like younger in elementary and middle school and I wasn't super super into reading, especially books like that, that thick. So I only ever read like half of the first Twilight book. I never read the other books and if you know about that, like the Breaking Dawn part two the ending is different in the book like they don't have that whole crazy thing that happens in breaking dawn part two in the book so i kind of think i want to read those in the fall and i think that would be like a really fun video to do because i just love twilight so much and it makes me so happy it feels like, like watching those movies feels like coming home like i love those movies so much but yeah thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope you guys enjoyed it and please like subscribe all of that youtube stuff i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i hope you have a great rest of your day thank you so much for watching and bye